Jay here for Stratford Paddock. This is the huge debate. This is number three in a series of three, and we're asking the question, is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer good enough to win trophies at Manchester United? Joining me is Mr. Stephen Housen and Mr. Adam McCullough. How do you? Macker, I'll start with you. No. I know you love Ole. Love him. I know you do. We all do. To bits. Is he good enough, though, to bring success to this football club? What is success? Winning trophies. Challenging for titles. I think Ole Winning can win a trophy. Ultimately. I think Ole can win a trophy. Right. I think when you look around the the way things are at the moment, I think you could very easily see him win a trophy, especially a cup competition. My worry is, and success at Manchester United has to be deemed to be winning the league, right? Yes, yeah, ultimate success. Yeah. At least, you know. So I think he can win a trophy, yes. Hopefully he'll eventually win it. Do I think he can win the league? I'm very sceptical of that. Right. Because of what I've seen over the last two years. Now, a lot of what we've seen over the last two years could have been helped by better investment, you know, better players in certain positions, etc., etc. But the inconsistency over that time, if that is something that plagues him, then you'd feel that would be something that would cost you from winning a title. And I kind of think what we see of United at the moment, you know, we're very good for 10 games. Then we're very bad for five. If that's the way we continue to go, you can't ever expect to win a league title like that. But I'm... When we come up against teams, whether it's PSG, I know we haven't under jo uh, under Ali, uh, Real Madrid, all these, I'm confident we can beat them. So I do think we could actually win a trophy, um, and I'm less less optimistic about the league title. I think I think our team's probably not good enough. One, yeah, but two, you need consistency, and we don't seem to have that. Um, Looking at when Oli came in, he's had 102 games as both caretaker and permanent manager. He's had 57 wins, 20 draws, 25 losses, a 55.88% win ratio, which is pretty good. Does that show you that there's something there? Do you think that Oli is the man for the job long term? Yeah, it does. And I'm glad Adam mentioned the um, questioning whether the team's good enough to win the league because if the team ain't good enough to win the league, guess what? You ain't going to win the league. You ain't going to win the league. No. Now, it's on a manager to get the best out of their players, and you've got to evaluate a manager on several different things. Does he improve the players at his disposal? Yeah, he does. We have saw Luke Shaw have a bit of a resurgence under him, more so than you've seen him have under um, Jose. We've seen um, Fred play better than he ever played under um, Jose. You've seen the emergence of Mason, Tony Marshall, Marcus Rashford put in their best ever goal scoring seasons <clears throat> some credit needs to go to the players some credit should go to the manager you give credit to other managers that do this sort of thing so why not Oli uh, we saw the defence from Jose Mourinho the worst ever defence that we'd seen Oli obviously took part uh, halfway through that season to one of our best ever defences in terms of goals conceded now Maka's kind of right on the consistency but kind of not there's been a couple of crashes with United and I think some of them can be explained some of them maybe not so but we went on a, a 15 game unbeaten run from when he first took over that now you've misquoted me in the video you did with Joe the other day and when we was having a bit of a debate in the watch long you saying that I said Jose <laughs> de no, sorry Ollie deserved the job I didn't say he deserved the job I said he's in the job I said he got the job I didn't say that I feel like he deserved it I say he got the job on the back of that run as caretaker. But did he not deserve it, though? Off the back of that run as caretaker? Yeah, he probably did. Right. I, I feel... I don't want to go into that debate because... Yeah, yeah. I just want well, to keep let it me, on Ali. Let me finish on yeah, this. Go, go, sorry, but I in that, I just feel like you, you shouldn't judge you if you're going to appoint someone on okay. 10 games, 15 games. They were looking for a manager yeah. to come in. Can you imagine they hadn't appointed him on the back of 13 wins and two draws and no losses, and they bring in, let's say it's Poch, Let's say it's Nagelsmann. Let's say it's Allegri. And they do the run that Ollie's had since himself. Can you imagine the clamour? Why didn't, why didn't we appoint Ollie? That's all everybody will be saying. I don't... I, I disagree with that. I think he was that. getting the job in December when he was appointed as interim? Absolutely not. But what he did in those 15 games, I do think probably made a very, very, very strong case for him. And more importantly than that, when you think about what this club values, which is money... We had 11 or 13 players at the time that was due to have their contracts expired. None of them players are going to sign a deal when they don't know who that manager is going to be. Now, a lot of those players, Tony Marshall, Paul Pogba, um, Luke Shaw might have been one of them, 
probably we're going to walk out the door. It's probably nearly £200 million worth of player that's about to walk out the door. David De Gea, I think, was another one. If they're all happy with Oli, you know how this board works. Now, I'm not saying they agree with it, but I'm saying you know how this board works. If they can go, well, we can get six of them to sign up so we don't lose them for free because they kind of like the guy that's in. And the evidence suggests, you know, this guy's done better than what we've ever seen anyone do in this job with this team. Now, that run came to an end. I don't think it came to an end because he got the job. Well, and no, he got, he got the job after the run came to the end. He got, he got back-to-back defeats when they gave him the job. People yeah. forget that. He lost to Arsenal. He lost to Wolves getting yeah. knocked out of the top four and getting knocked out of the FA Cup. And then they gave him the job on a permanent basis, which was the only baffling thing for me. Not that he got the job permanently after that run. It was the timing of it. But the run came to an end on the back of us getting four injuries in the first half against Liverpool. And I defy anyone to, to take four players out of a first team and, and see no difference. I didn't have a problem with the end of that season. Well, I did as a fan. I wanted to see us win games, but I kind of felt like we had a lot of players that hearts were elsewhere. You know, coming to the end of a the season, there was a tournament. Was there a tournament in there? No. 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 It was a so tournament was before, right? But nevertheless, there was. I just felt like there was a load of... Pl- some players knew they were gone. Some players couldn't be arsed, tired, fatigued. Also, you had... They were playing for Jose Mourinho one style and then they just completely changed that style when, when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer came they'll in. They'll throw this, this manager under the bus. They've done it before. I, I, I find that very lazy analysis when people say players don't fight for the badge, aren't fighting for the manager. They, they'll throw him under the bus. That's bollocks. That's well, bollocks. That's rubbish. Liverpool at Anfield under Because Jose, these players... But... Nah. Because everyone was saying at the time with Jose, these players aren't playing for them. He was 2-0 down against Newcastle on the day that everyone was saying he's going to get sacked. Those players didn't want him. Bro, you don't see Marshall and Pogba inspiring a comeback in that game the if Liverpool they didn't want game. him to be there. Do you but know what the I mean? Liverpool game, it undoubtedly was. But I find that was. comes down... To Liverpool are a better team than us. It was. Let's be real. Like, it was. But you can lose zero against Liverpool. Fight. And I think, like, it, it has to come down to... I think that's very lazy. It has to come down to the overall picture of it. Look, Jose got sacked. Ali came in. I ain't finished my point on consistency, by the way. Go on. Go on. So then we go on a 19-game unbeaten run. Following yep. the uh, the bringing in of, of Bruno, and yep. we, I think we all probably would say Solskjaer maybe mismanaged the squad. I think we went for a record. Was it eight or nine times the same eleven, <coughs> something like that? It was at yeah. least seven. Might have I think gone it might longer have, than that. It was definitely seven in I the league. It was it was longer, um, and we we ran the legs off those players. And I think that's why we saw a bit of a crash that we saw at the end of the season because he hadn't used his squad. Now the argument in defence of Oli is that he clearly wasn't happy with his backup players. And that might be one of the reasons why we've seen a lot of squad players brought into the squad so he can manage that a little bit better. We've also seen a literal record-breaking number of away wins. Now, at no point is anyone thinking that this team is better than any team Fergie ever had. But they're getting, in one very specific metric, a, a far better result than Fergie ever did. So there's three instances of unparalleled consistency at this club that Solskjaer has oversaw while he's been at the helm. And Istanbul aside, because there's no excuse for that, the other two have got mitigating circumstances for why those two runs came to an end. So when you say, can he win a league? Well, yeah, because you might not think Mulder is um, an achievement, but this is a team that had never won the league. So you've got to try and paint it in this. This is a team that have never won the league, never challenged for a league. He, he turns them into a team that not only wins a league, but retains a title, something that Jurgen Klopp's not done yet. So that, for me, is a big thing. Not right. only winning the league, with a team... Here's the thing. Anyone can go to Manchester City and win the league. Pellegrini did it, Mancini did it, Pep spent a billion and did it, right? You win a back-to-back title with a team that's never won a league, that is an achievement, regardless of the level of what that league might be. It's still a top-flight professional league. Then that tells me that that man understands how to meander through the entirety of a season to win it and then also do it when you've got target on your back the following season when everyone expects you to win it and also deliver at that time couple that with the the massively consistent runs that he had that tells me that this guy can do it especially when you add in his performance or the team's performance when he gets it tactically right in the big games because in the big games i think Since his appointment, only Liverpool have got a better record against the rest of the top six. And as we've seen, unbelievable performances um, at PSG. 
which you no know, nobody thought we were getting through in that. You've got your doubts, Maka. Is that does that come from all his CV or from what you've seen as him as United manager? It comes it from com- it comes from everything, yeah. but also a little bit of fear as well. Like I remember when, like at the time, the board said they were going to do some, like they were going to look around and do what. And I was thinking, like, bro, if you're going to be putting this geezer into a job, possibly out of his debt. We all love him. We've got this emotional connection to him. I don't want. I, you know, I, I don't. I don't want that to happen. Yeah, do you yeah, know what I mean? What I don't. Mean. I don't want. Up. Like, look how some fans are already talking about him. Like, do you know what I mean? And the I Norwegian PE teacher and like, all that other. Even just some of the. Oh, he only done this. Dicks on Twitter. Don't it's, count. No, I know, yeah, but no, it's just like you don't ever want that. He's a legend. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I remember. Of course he is. I, I was close to tears when he retired. I mean, like, no it. lie. Like, I remember it coming through on the guy, and I just thought, <laughs> like, I love this geezer. I remember. The Charlton game when he bowed down to the when he scored on his it's from my favorite and, he, and he bowed down in that white and gold shirt and in the pissing down with rain and it's like he scored bro he's Ollie bro. his first start is to bow the crowd listen he we, is us yeah we love Ollie like I got my yeah. doubts because of the fact that he's not been at a club this stature one thing in his favor is he knows he knows the club. He knows the fans. He knows the expectations. He knows all these things. So you can never accuse him of not knowing that. Under Jose, who was a much more qualified coach, you could say, sometimes he missed the he missed the memo. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. you know, football heritage and oh, like no, that severe press in, conference. In was some a horrible things, press Ollie, conference. And that's not to say Ollie's a better manager than him. Before people start killing <clears> me, but. Ollie gets the club in that sense. Like he, he can navigate himself away around things. My genuine fear is probably not a good enough manager, but that's not me saying, and this is what pissed me off the other day. Like when the lads put that clip of me and him out and they titled it as Ollie versus Potch, my argument was never about Ollie against Potch or Ollie being, and my point about him getting the job and not deserving it was to Steve. Steve said, Potch hasn't done anything. Now I don't want to go into that conversation again. But to say Potch hasn't done Good anything phrasing. when he's taken Spurs to where he's taken them and then say Oli deserved the job on the back of 15 games, I think that doesn't make any sense. But that's going to another... Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, last season, getting us third place, that run that he had from January to July, even if you consider from Bruno Fernandes signing to now, I think only one or two teams have got more points than us. Like, when you look back at the year that he's had, he, earned, he has earned the support through this difficult time. He has earned that because he's he's got us here. He's got us into the Champions League. The board failed to back him in the summer. Now you can't just, after a bad run, go, oh, fucking hell, let's sack him. Yeah. Like it, it doesn't make sense. Do you know what I mean? It, it doesn't make sense at all. You have to be able to stand by him, especially after you didn't back him in the summer. And let's see how it goes. I do think though this season, it's make or break time. This not is you have to win the league or you have to... Right, but show win us a trophies, something. but show us that this team is now. Pro- if we at the end of the season, have, you can finish fourth and still have progressed as well. By the way, I don't. I'm not just going to be qualifying it by league position, but if you feel this team hasn't progressed at the end of the season, I think you do have to start looking elsewhere. Talking about looking elsewhere, and I'll start with you on this. We know there's a certain expert manager that you two have spoken about that's a heavy favourite. I think he's four to one on. To be the next United manager. Other names in the the mix are not a guaranteed success. No, no, by the way. no. Allegri, Nagelsmann. I think even Brendan Rodgers is a is a sort of semi. Oh, not a bad shout. A Pete, semi outside. But off. my point is, my point is it's not it's, right in terms of on. what he's done. Like, there's many words. Not that I want, but I don't want Brendan. Rodgers. I will never have a next. But I'm just manager saying, like, ever. he's what he's actually doing at Leicester isn't a bad thing. Yeah, cool. Don't want him. Like Jay said, I can't. He's just off the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. uh, no, you're not having a Scouts reject, basically, managing your football club. Not happening. But the names I've mentioned, you know, you might look at the likes of Poch. And that's the Allegri. only thing that affects Brendan Rodgers, you know. do not matter. Once you've managed Liverpool, you've managed Liverpool. You're just off the record. We can't be touched anymore. It's like driving a new car off a forecourt. Yeah? There's miles on the clock now. You can't touch it. You can't say there's no miles here's on the a, clock. Here's a, here's a tricky one for you. Here's a tricky one. <gasps> Jürgen Klopp, would you take him right Fucking now? Fucking absolutely not. You imagine the boy will piss. No. Imagine it. No, I couldn't it's do fucking it. Good do you know as when well. Michael Owen came on at Old Best Trafford, manager in right? the world. <laughs> in the derby, the one where he did the thing, right? Oh. I'm clapping. And I was like, this is for Wes Brown. Just letting everyone know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah good. good call, good call. Yeah. Then he scored and we lost our minds. Yeah. Right? And I regret that still. Because he's a fucking knob. Nah, that was a great moment. Great yeah, but game. you know what though? 
not to go off topic, though, that's overrated, that game. Because we still didn't win the league last season. Good point. No, it's not overrated. That it game. is because... It's no, but no, listen to me. People say it's the greatest derby ever. It isn't because the greatest derby ever for me... Like, the Rooney overhead kick's better because we won the league that season. The Van Persie free kick in the Etihad is better because it's a last-minute winner right, and right, we won right, the league right, that anyway. season. Brendan Rodgers... That's my point. He's off record. Just shut up. Right? It's like marrying... You're marrying best mate, you're off the record. That's it. All right. <laughs> right okay. Anyway. You did... What about Mark Hughes? What about Mark Hughes? Mark Hughes. He once said. He once said. What about Mark Hughes? You said Mark Hughes? <laughs> no. Are you off your head? <laughs> no, and I'm this, right? A lot what? of people said, I well, wanted Mark Hughes. Michael Let me finish. Hey. A lot of people said, I wanted Mark Hughes. Because did an article where I explored the possibility of Mark Hughes. Right. And my conclusion. Here's the thing. People are thick and never get to the conclusion of stuff. And at the bottom I'm of it, it, it I said, <laughs> I don't think he's big enough wrist. Right, I don't think good enough to take a risk on. So so people, I don't, but I don't give a shit that he managed to sit. It just wow. means nothing to me. Oh, no, We've been asked to talk about all tennis. He's United first. No, I hate right. United first. Right. Klopp is Liverpool first. Rogers is Liverpool is first. It. Fuck him. Right. Anyway, alternative to Wally. Are there any out there that um, you think? I'll start with you. Gulleron, Gulleron? No, because you think he's good enough. Are there any out there that you think? I'm not. I don't. I don't. Would be a better fit. I don't think. It's time to be talking about sacking the manager. No, I'm not talking about sacking the manager. I'm saying, do you look at that and think that's a manager that's more likely to bring if success Ali got than Ole today, If Ali got sacked tomorrow, yeah, Poch would be my first choice. Everyone knows that. Right. Alternatives to that, you've obviously got Allegri who's out there. Would he be for me? Probably not. You've got Simeone, too negative for me. Um, but you could bring Sal Niguez with him. Um, I genuinely don't know. I don't know. I, I, Here's the I, thing on it, Go and on. no one's guaranteed. To, like, I'm, Bingo. let me let me finish what I was going to say about Poch. Even though I'm a fan of Poch's, doesn't mean he's going to come. And, uh, a year later, I could be thinking this wasn't the right idea. Yeah, and, and, and and you're allowed to say it like just because I think he could be the one doesn't mean he would be or is or is a guaranteed. We thought oh, Jose was a guaranteed to at least win us a league title, yeah, but I he did. might be painful along the way. Cup. Yeah, um, you know what I mean? He, same thing. We had yeah, Stockholm, same, same. I suppose, yeah. which is great. Um, yeah, no, you know great. what I mean? Van Orr was supposed to be this. Moyes was... Like, we've had all these things that are supposed to be... like. No one came with know. a better CB at the time than Lou Van Gaal. He was literally the best man available. I was well excited when we got him. Yeah. And a few things that you get with Louis happened. You know, you Marshall saw Rashford. a very a very defined style of play. You know, he is... He is um, he is a Cruyffism, like he's one of the descendants of Cruyff in terms of the style of play. Um, so you was always going to get that kind of thing. You also get the uh, heavy investment in youth with with Lou Van Gaal. Obviously, we, we saw the emergence of Marcus Rashford. He gave out like debuts like sweets. Um, with Jose, you're going to get Marshall. you're going to get the opposite. You're going to get a bit of park in a bush. You're going to get a lot of shit You're going to get people absolutely wigging out over certain things. But he will bring you level of success. Now, for me. The CV of Jose Mourinho at the time he was available yep. was unparalleled in world football. Right. It's not the same circumstances with Pochettino. The CV is well easy to find in world football of Pochettino, of guys that haven't won trophies or have this attitude that trophies are there for only ego. It's an unbelievable... And, and I believe he's tried to quantify that because he's probably getting phone calls off United. He's trying to quantify that by saying... The it, it, depends, it depends at the club that you're on. And I'll give him that. that it does depend at the club. You can't walk in at Macclesfield... I think say, his point with that at Spurs League. was... If I win a League Cup here... Fuck is the point? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it to to really be historic, like win the league at Spurs, win the Champions League, that's fucking big deal. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think yeah. that winning was, a league. I thought it was a weird one though. Yeah, winning eight trophies. I thought it was a weird one though because he had the team that would almost walk to an FA Cup or a league. Yeah, cup, yeah. If you or a league. To. At the time, that defense was considered the best in the league. Was it? Yo, know, um, he had Walker, didn't he? I'm sure he did. No, he built that team. You know, so look at the team when uh, he came yeah, in. He Look at the players, like, look at the team that he left. And it, I think Jose could win the league this year. And if he does, a lot of it will be down to Poch. Right. Or is it down to Paul Mitchell? Because <laughs> Who's he? He, built a team, Fils, brother. Fuck he built a team at Grant. Southampton for him. You know, the team that he had, the job that he did at Southampton, Van Dyke, Mane, um, you know, was Luke Shaw there? It was Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw was there at the same time. You know, there's players there, but all yeah, of these players are, are Paul one Mitchell season players. where they won every game at home or something like that. It's like, so I don't it look. Listen, right. Regardless, 
about whether it is Poch, whether it is Brendan well, Rodgers or anyone Allegri's else. going to make people lose their mind if they thought Jose was too negative. Simeone's going to make people jump off buildings if they yeah, thought Jose that's, that's was too negative. Madness. Hassan who was that, that suggested that the other day? Was it someone on TalkSport oh. or someone on it saying, that, um, oh... Oh, it was Simeone. Trevor Sinclair. So, oh, right. Well, let's not oh. comment. No, no, I'm not going down that route. We'll end Yo, up getting cancelled. You look at no. Hassan Hootle. Hassan Hootle literally lost 9-0 last season. Right? I tried. If you want to talk about what people it. have done, he's done a phenomenal job turning it around. <laughs> Look, when I said Eddie Howe, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm having a laugh, but ultimately what Eddie Howe has achieved is pretty good, and he's won leagues. Like, which which is no, 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 right, enough, no, enough, no, you enough, can't enough, say that, enough. you can't say that, it's one league, with the, with, with the championship, descend, we're descending into farce when we start putting the words Eddie Howe and Manchester United manager in the same sentence, but this is the thing I'm talking right. about, you're talking Let's, about and Pochettino, he said he's not done anything, <laughs> he's not done anything, yes. right, right, tactically, the, the biggest decision the of Pochettino's career, <laughs> whoa, you'll send him over here, the biggest, <laughs> ach- the over. biggest game of Pochettino's career, right, <laughs> he gets through, a phenomenal achievement getting through against Ajax, an Ajax team littered with talent, right? Uh, on the back of Lucas Moura hat trick, yeah. yeah, and drops him for the final because oh, Sir Harry's back. Harry that, Kane's best. If he had anything, world, ab- what are you, I can't. I can't. What are we doing? <laughs> he was can't also in arguments about Harry Kane and Eddie Howe. Right, listen, you know their thoughts. He's not so sure. He thinks. Oh, well, sure. Fuck Poch. Right, we're gonna uh, win the league this year, though. We're gonna win the league this year, even though he might not be the right man for the job. Um, <laughs> He don't like Poch. <laughs> That's been Adam McCullough. That's been Stephen. Do you know Harrison. what as well? Yeah, he's God, stupid God. because help me. We're probably going to get him. We're probably going to get him. And I'm going to see like clips up. This is going to get clips. All those bits are like fuck Poch. I hate Poch. Poch, what's he ever won? He did it on Pep. Yeah. Yeah. Before he did Pep. Oh yeah, and then I said he wanted <laughs> it. I didn't know. I never did. did I know you never. I never said. Did you do Van Dijk? The Dutch smiling or something? Right. I'm on a video call. Flame Wars. The whole idea is not a TED talk. Sitting across a scouser. Oh my God, when will you ever learn? Anyway, that's been Adam McCall. I'll do that again. That's been Stephen Allison. I've been Jay Meyer. This has been a huge debate. And fuck Poch in case you didn't Whether remember. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer can bring success to I Manchester know. United. Let us know what you think. Do you think Ole's the man for the job? Do you think it's Poch or anyone else who is a better bet? Get involved in the comments and don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. 21 is coming. Ole's at the wheel.